Welcome back to Holtham's Apiary. I'm Jason Holtham. This video is the first video of a series that I'm launching on the channel where I'll be taking you step by step through how I build a digital beehive scale for my beehives. You won't want to miss it. Okay, so basically this build that I'm planning on doing is going to consist of a few different components. Um, the first component that's probably perhaps the most important um, of them all is uh, this right here. This is an Arduino microcontroller. It's an Uno R3. Uh, costs about 20, 21 euro on Amazon. Um, and it's a very versatile little device. Um, there are literally thousands of do-it-yourself projects out there that are running off of Arduino uh, or one of their variants. Um, you can get these boards, like I said, very, very um, cost efficiently. And they have also other um, manufacturers that are based off of the Arduino, but are um, more generic brands. Um, that's actually all irrelevant. The most important thing is what's running in the microcontroller in the chip and the different uh, possibilities that you have with this uh, setup. The next um, portion of this build is the 50 kilogram load cell um, along with an HX711 amplifier module. Um, I'll be needing four of these, and um, I'm also will be using these uh, 3D printed brackets to fasten them down on whatever surface I planned on using. I'm probably just gonna, in the prototyping phase, use a wooden board or whatever, uh, just to test them out. These were 3D printed from a, uh, by a coworker from me, uh, Chris Drexler. Um, so shout out to you, Chris. Thanks for uh, helping me out with this prototyping. Um, there is a little bit of fine tuning that we still have to do with some of the dimensions on the inside, but basically this will just clip in and this will um, then be fastened down with uh, some screws. Um, the HX711 um, amplifier chip is needed to amplify the signals that are sent by this load cell to the Arduino. Um, there's lots of tutorials online on how to use these uh, load cells, and I will post a couple of those in the description. Um, so that's going to be the sensors that are needed for this build. And uh, to make it, of course, easy to, to read and, and to, um, to see in real time what the values of the scale are, I'll be using this uh, OLED display um, it's a 128 by 32 pixel display. Um, it's not very big, but um, when I use the proper font for it, um, it'll definitely be big enough and plenty big enough for, um, for using in this build. Um, there'll be some a uh, couple of other peripheral items that will also um, be used in this build. I'll also uh, plan to power the Arduino with a 9-volt external uh, battery, which will be plugged into this uh, jack here. And um, so there will have to be a switch. And I'm also going to probably design some kind of a button uh, that I can use to uh, reset the scale to zero if I ever need to, to do that. So those are the basic components of this build. So now that I've given you a brief introduction to the components that I need, um, I'm going to explain to you a problem, not really a problem, but um, something that um, probably needs to be addressed. Um, the HX711, it takes five volts. It gets the five volts from the Arduino. Uh, the Arduino has a uh, on one front rail here, it has some different um, outputs. Um, there's a five volt and there's actually also a 3.3 .3 volt. 
that you can use, um, but um, there's only one, right? So there's only one five volt um, that can be output to a circuit at one time. The HX711 also takes five volts here in the VCC. So I'll need to have some kind of a connector between the Arduino and the HX711. And the OLED as well has five volts as VCC. So now I have, of course, the question of how am I going to get five volts to both the OLED and to the HX711. There's a couple of different things I can do, and I'm going to show you what I've decided to do for the future. Okay, so one obvious thing that probably has popped into your mind is, well, why not just make a, a jumper cable that will basically split the five volt into two? So like a Y-shaped jumper cable. Well, that's possible, but it's very difficult to get these, uh, these wires into these DuPont uh, um, plugs uh, as it is. So uh, getting two in there would uh, seem, seems to be impossible. Uh, I've tried it a couple times. I was not successful. It could just be that I don't have the proper equipment or the proper tools, but that's okay. I'm not going to let that slow me down. Um, I think I have a different solution that um, seems to be promising. So what I can do is I can use um, some perf board and I can use uh, some header pins and I can use this terminal and I can basically make a little extension. Um, so what I can do is I can take the perf board, of course I don't need it to be the entire, uh, the entire length here. Um, how long is this actually? Um, this is 8 centimeters long, so I don't really need 8 centimeter long extension board. Um, so what I can do is I can just basically put this, um, put these plugs on here. They go on pretty snugly, so those will be pretty easy to solder on. Just flip them over, solder them on. And then I can just make um, two rails of um, header pins. Uh, I don't know, I probably need like four or five. And I could just break those off and solder them also on here, flip it over, connect them all together and then I have a little uh, power rail that I can use as an extension that's one possibility um, I'm sure there are other possibilities but uh, you know I thought why not try this out so now I'm going to explain to you one problem that I have that I've come across and what I'm going to do to solve it okay let's say I have this um, Let's say I have this little terminal here soldered on and it's fixed and I can't move it. Um, it's not soldered on yet, but let's just say it's, it's soldered on. And now I want to add my um, connection rails to that. So my, pen, my headers for say five volts and for ground. Oop, I actually put that one on the wrong side. It's okay. So now, now you would think, okay, well, those look nice. They fit on there nicely, and that seems like a pretty good thing. The problem is, now if I want to turn this thing over and I want to solder it, they start to fall out. Um, even if I would just let it basically sit on top of this uh, terminal here, um, it doesn't have the right height, so it's just going to fall off. So what in the world can I do to fix this problem? Well, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to fix this problem. Okay, so something that I've already done, um, I did this off camera, is I created a little board here that has um, two sets of headers. It has the male to male headers on the right side. And on the left side, it has female to male headers and they're just soldered on just to hold them in place. They have no 
Um, I have no intention of using them for a circuit. They're just here to hold the, um, the different uh, components in place. So I've already taken a look and you can see that the width of this perf board is um, six of these rings wide um, and it's pretty long. Uh, I'm not gonna count them. It doesn't really matter because I'm gonna cut it anyway. So um, the thing is, however, with this little board that I made, um, unfortunately, and I probably should have measured it one more time before I made this, um, we have a space of one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's actually, this row is uh, one row too far, uh, far to the right. But that's okay, that's okay. I can actually do something. Um, kind of cheating, but it's not really cheating. It's just being innovative. I'm going to place this male-to-male -male header um, right next to it, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a female-to-male -male header that normally would be like this in the perf board, but I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm going to stick that on top of the header that I just inserted. So now it's kind of extended, it's a little bit higher. As you can see, it's higher on the right side than on the left. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the piece that I wanna solder, which is this here, and I actually wanna solder it on this portion of the board, right? So I want to, in reality, this is how it's gonna look. Right, so I have to somehow get those four pins or these five pins soldered down. So I'm just gonna take this off again. I'm gonna flip it upside down and I'm going to place it on my little holder board here. And it fits in snug. And now I have basically two helpers here that can help hold up the perf board. Um, I'm gonna make another, a new one of these where <laughs> the spacing is correct. And then now I can come and I can turn this to whatever side I want to. Remember, those are the short sides. Those need to be soldered to the bottom. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm going to look and see where I need this to go. And now I could solder it on. That's a little bit too close. Let's go a little bit closer. It's a little too far away. The terminal takes up quite a bit of space. There we go, finally. So, so it's not holding perfectly because it's really long. So what I could do is I could come back, I could go right ahead right now and I could cut it to the length that I want to have it. Um, I'm not sure if I wanted to have a little bit longer because maybe in the future I want to add something else to this board. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it uh, right here where it says, or where the letter O is, O and P. And I'm going to take some of these tin snips. These tin snips right here. And I'm just going to... cut it right off. So and now we have an actual staple base that I can solder the um, pins onto. So I'm going to turn it back this way again. And I'll go ahead and solder those on.
So as you can see, now I have basically this entire rail here is connected with the uh, terminal on the other side. And now I have basically both sides soldered on. So I can do a little test, get my multimeter and power supply. Okay, so now I'm going to check with a voltmeter. I'm going to check that we have five volts going to our little uh, terminal here. So that's five volts. Five volts. Five volts. Five, 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 yep. Yeah. Let's just do it all on the ground. Five, five, five. Get that one. Five. So, yeah, it was successful. Um, not the prettiest of soldering jobs, but um, it does the trick. What I can actually do too is I will be able to use a board like this in the future for other things. Um, I can use it also to uh, couple with the I2C bus on the, um, on the Arduino, which are the A4 and A5 pins, the analog four, analog five pins. Um, if I have other projects where I want to use, for instance, um, a the OLED display, the OLED is actually going to the um, to the I two C, so I could use the OLED, and I could use, for instance, a humidity and temperature sensor or whatever, and uh, could use a, a bus like this as well, since there's only one A four and one A five on the Arduino. All right, that's it for this video, the first video of the series of me making a beehive scale. Um, I'm not a professional at soldering, so I'm gonna be have to practice. I'm gonna be practicing that more in the next couple couple of weeks, uh, so I can get better at that. But um, I'll probably also make some kind of modifications for that little adapter so that I can actually use it for other soldering projects. If you haven't already done it, please hit like and subscribe so that you will actually see the rest of the videos of this series. And I hope to have them out to you as soon as possible. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun beekeeping.